All right, welcome back to another Chemistry 111 YouTube video. And in this one, we're gonna tackle something a little bit different. And so instead of giving you an answer key, we're gonna kind of run through a tutorial here. Um, balancing redox reactions sometimes can be really easy and sometimes it can be really tough. And so like the ones we've done in class where you see, I don't know, for example, the zinc and the copper, it's really easy to say, okay, well, this one has a two electron oxidation. This one has a two electron reduction. It's really easy to balance that because it's a one-to-one. -one. And we even did one with, uh, what was it? I think we did silver, which was a one electron transfer and copper. That was a two electron transfer. And we knew we had to multiply silver by two because we had to balance the number of electrons. And, and those you can get kind of quickly, but the ones that I gave you on the homework, I would say are, are kind of challenging because it, I, I just can't look at them and balance them. And so when you get ones that are tough, um, I'm gonna show you a method here called the ECHO method, which is used in many textbooks. And, and I find it works for just about any reactions. Uh, you might have learned a different way and that's fine if you can use it successfully and, and you're confident and then use that. But um, try this one and see how it works. So I'm gonna run through an example, uh, very similar to your homework. In fact, I think this is your homework problem. So you get a free one. Um, and we're gonna do it where we're gonna balance this redox reaction. And we notice here um, that I've given you a very special condition. I've told you that we're gonna balance this under acidic conditions. And what this means is that uh, the reaction is gonna undergo, is it gonna, sorry, the reaction is gonna be um, proceeding in uh, an acidic environment. So what does that mean? That means if we're under acidic conditions, if we just think about the Arrhenius definition, right, we're gonna have lots of what? We're gonna have lots of water around and we're probably gonna have lots of, you guessed it, H plus, right? This is an aqueous environment. So these will be used later on. So it's good to just notice what we're dealing with here. And so if I tell you acidic conditions, kind of just write this over here that you have these at your disposal because there's a lot of them. If I tell you it's basic conditions, well, we'd have a lot of water and we'd have a lot of OH, right? The hydroxide around. And so uh, we'll get to the basic one in a minute. But for right now, let's go ahead and start to, to think about this as a whole. And so Echo is, is a really unique uh, way of solving. And so if you can look at the echo here, the acronym stands for um, electrons, charge, hydrogens, and oxygen. And again, I don't care if you remember the, the name echo, but I find it to be very, very useful. So once again, electrons, charge, hydrogen, oxygen. And here's what we're gonna do. First thing we need to do is balance the number of electrons. And just by looking at it, you probably just can't tell um, how many electrons are transferred. And so we need to actually map this out. And the way I do it, um, I like to look at the oxidation state of everything that's given. So um, let's start from back here. This is bromine, and this bromine is gonna be, um, I guess, aqueous. It could be also uh, bromine liquid as well. But if you look at this, you've got Br2, and uh, Br2 is a neutral compound, and so its um, oxidation state is zero and it's really important to write these out at least the first couple times you do it, the oxidation state is bromine. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna write out all the oxidation states and then I'm gonna inspect them later on and see what changed. Because if something changes, that means it probably either was oxidized or reduced and that's a really important part of the electron transfer. This manganese, right, it's aqueous. Um, it's a transition metal and it could have many oxidation states, but we were given that the product here is gonna be a two plus and that's really important. So we got a zero, a two plus, this bromide, right, is a, an aqueous uh, halide ion, and so that's given to us, that's a negative charge. So really the only work we have to do now is find out what the charge is for these guys. And for oxygen, I would argue almost, um, you know, 99% of the times you're gonna see this, oxygens are almost always gonna be a two minus, and that's really important to kind of get a feel for that. And so if you think about that, this whole polyatomic ion, this, um, this guy here, and you might not have seen it before, but um, if you look at the overall charge, right, it's overall one minus. Okay, well, if that's the case, you have four of these oxygens, you know that you have each one that's a two minus, so if you add them all together, you racked up eight negative charge, right? Now, if you know that that's negative eight and the overall charge for that whole chunk is a negative one, what must this manganese be to balance it out. Well, in this case, I would argue that the manganese is gonna be what? Well, seven positive plus eight negative gives you a leftover one negative, and that's how you can determine the charge. 
really neat. So always take things that you know, such as oxygen, right? Oxygen's almost always gonna be a negative two. So that's uh, something you can usually count on. So there we go, okay. So now what I'm gonna do, and there are a couple of ways you can do this. Sometimes people like to say, okay, um, I've got the uh, manganese seven plus going to a two plus. And so we can write that out. And we can say, um, if you want to, I don't know why it disappeared, but there we go, we'll draw it again. I'm gonna go ahead and write it out. I'm gonna see we have the manganese, and again, I'm not writing the whole thing, I'm just looking at what changed. Manganese seven plus, and it's gonna go to manganese two plus. And so in order to do this, right, this went from seven to two, and you guessed it, that is re reduced, right? That's reduction of the oxidation state. So that means we had to gain electrons. And in this case, we gained a whopping five electrons, right? And I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and write this out and tell me that this was reduction, right? That's really important. Reduction is gain of electrons. Okay, so if something was reduced, something has to be oxidized. Well, what else changed oxidation state? Well, we went from bromine, or bromide rather, to bromine, and so what happened here? We had a bromide negative going to bromine zero. Now this is really important. We had to be careful that this compound, this this you know uh, molecular form of bromine, is written as is. We cannot change this formula, and so this is a really tricky one. If it's written as Br two we have to obey the law of conservation of mass, right? We just can't make up atoms or lose atoms, and so we are obligated to put a two there. That's really important, because there's no way we can break this two up, so we've gotta get these two to balance out. Now we can look at that and say, okay, each of these bromides went from negative one to zero, which means that they each ended up losing an electron, right? They lost an electron to go from negative to neutral. And if there were two of them, each one lost one. So two total means that we lost two electrons. And we know that when we lose electrons, that is oxidation. And so here we have loss of electron and gain of electrons, really important here. Now, remember in class we talked about we have to balance the electrons and that's what the echo method does. The one we're on right now is the E. We're gonna balance the electrons. And so how can we do this? Well, we've got five electrons being consumed, but we only have two electrons being produced, right? That's a product and that's a reactant. So we have to come up with some essentially least common multiple. And in this case, well, if we multiply this by two, we get 10 electrons. And if we multiply this one by five, we also get 10 electrons. And if you think about this, here you're gonna have 10 electrons being consumed, 10 produced, and that's gonna balance out. So for our first step of E, we've balanced the electrons, and that's really important. So now all we do is take that number and multiply it by everything that's in the equation. And so when we add this up, we can say, okay, we can say that we had this manganese seven was up in this guy here, right, this permanganate, uh, and we've got um, two um, MnO4 minus, and I'm gonna actually, um, oops, don't wanna highlight her there, I wanna delete that, because that four looks kinda wonky. Um, there we go, so we got our permanganate, and again, I want you to make sure that you use your phases of matter, that's really important, and notice we put a two here, and why did we put a two? Because we had to multiply this whole thing by two. And then we've got what? We've got our bromide, right? The Br minus. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky and you should be careful here. Notice that we multiply this whole thing by five, but remember we have this two here, right? That's really important. So that means we need to carry down a 10 for the bromide. And remember, we multiplied this whole thing by five times two, that's where we get the 10. And now we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna get to our products, right? Now we've got the manganese two plus, that is right here, so we're gonna multiply, multiply that by two. So we get manganese two plus aqueous, right? And then what's left? Well, the only other thing left is the bromine, right? The bromine there, and that's gonna be, we're gonna say that's aqueous for right now. And remember, there's a one here times five, so we just bring that five down. So notice, everything that had to do with manganese, we multiplied by two, everything to do, to do with uh, 
bromine or bromide we multiplied by five, including the two that was already there because we've got a two locked up in that structure. So at this point, we've completed the electron balancing. Okay, let's move on to C. C stands for charge. And just like conservation of mass, we have to conserve charge. And so what I'm gonna do now is, for both the reactants and the products, I'm gonna count up the total charge. So here I've got two times negative one, which gives me a negative two. And I've got 10 times negative one, which gives me a negative 10, which means for the reactant side, I've got, what, a negative 12. Okay, and if that's the case, over here I've got two times two, so that's gonna be a positive four, and then five times zero, remember that's neutral, there's nothing there. So I've got a positive four. These clearly aren't balanced, right? Okay, so if we wanna balance the charge, how can we balance the charge? Well, what can we add to either side of the reaction to balance these charges. Well, that's where we go back up here where I hinted at the fact that we are under acidic conditions. And so which one of these would help us? Well, the water's not gonna help us, right? Because water doesn't have a charge, it's neutral. Ah, but you beat me to the punch. Yeah, the hydrogen, right, the proton, this H plus, does have a charge and there's lots of it around under acidic conditions. So if we need these two to balance, what side will adding positive help us? Well, if we add H pluses over here, that's just gonna make this more positive. That doesn't help us. But if we were to add, say, I don't know, um, something like 16 H pluses, that goes 16 plus 12 equals positive four. And at that point, we've balanced out the charges. So it's really easy. Here we've got 16 H pluses, and we have those around, no big deal. So we've got the electrons balanced, we've balanced the charge, what do you think H is? Well, I just said before, H is hydrogen, right? We've added 16 hydrogens over here, but you'll notice now we've broken law of conservation of, of mass, right? We don't have any hydrogens over here, but we have water around, and if we have 16 H's, well, that's simple enough to add eight H2O's in liquid form, and that balances the hydrogen. So there we go. And guess what? If you've done everything right, the oxygens, if you check them, they should show you you're correct. And so if we look over here, we've got two times four is eight, and we've got eight over there. So there we go. So this is our final answer. This crazy thing like this. This is a really hard example if you've not done these before, and I think the more you practice, the better you're gonna be. So that's how you would balance this equation under, um, or this reaction rather, under acidic conditions. Well, what you could do, right, is you could do this under basic conditions, and instead of adding H pluses, you could add OH minuses, and you probably add them over here because OH minuses would help you balance the charge in a different way to get over to negative 12. And so you can do that. Um, the other way you can do it is you can essentially neutralize a reaction, right? You can add, if you've got, um, you know, these 16 H pluses, you can add enough OHs to neutralize it, and you could check that out. Um, so you'd add 16 OHs over here and 16 OHs on this side, and you can check that out to get um, the, the, the correct uh, amount. So I'll try one of these to show you. So let's go ahead and I'm going to kind of mark this over here. And I'm going to say, how do we change if we balance this under basic conditions? Because I, I think I want to show you. I don't want to just tell you. And so under basic conditions, what do you have around? You've got a bunch of water, and you've got a bunch of OH minus, right? And that's all aqueous. So how can you do this? Well, we don't have to go all the way to the beginning, right? We can go to the part where we balance the charges. And I think that gave us something like uh, 2MnO4 minus um, aqueous plus 10. Uh, I'm just writing down what we had before we added the acid last time. And so we're gonna have two Mn2 plus plus uh, five of the uh, bromine. There you go. Okay, so we're gonna pretend that we did not add the H pluses like we did above. Again, this is perfectly fine above for acidic conditions, but we're gonna try this basic condition um, example. And so here we see what? We've got the same thing. We've got two times negative one and 10 times negative one. So that means we've got negative 12 over here. So we're doing the charge balancing again. And then over here we got two times two, which is positive four. Okay, so if we're gonna balance this under 
um, basic conditions, what would we do? Well, the OH, right, is negatively charged. So if we add OHs to the reactant side, it's just going to drive us more negative and we'll never get to balance to the positive 4. However, if we add some OHs over here, we can bring it down to negative 12, right? And so if we're at 4 and we want to get to negative 12, you would add what? Plus 16 OH minuses, right? And if you think about that, okay, you've got. Um, what do we got? We got uh, two times that. Two times two is negative uh, positive four plus sixteen. Now gives us negative twelve, and that balances to the other side. Okay, so we've balanced charge. Now we've introduced some uh, hydrogens over here, right? And so in this case, if we want to balance the hydrogens, we have to go back onto the other side and add eight H two O's, liquid form. And so now we've got 16 H's, we've got 8 H's over here, 8 times 2 rather is 16. And then finally, we can check our oxygens to see if everything is balanced. And so here we say, okay, we've got 16 oxygens, right? And you might get scared at first because you only got 8 for the water, but you've also got another 8 in this permanganate. So it all balances out. So in this case, you've got one example where we've balanced it under acidic conditions and one example where we've balanced it under basic conditions. I hope this, I tried to keep this video short. I went really quickly. Um, I'd be happy to answer questions in class or do another video, but I hope this one shows you the power of the ECHO method and will help you uh, get at both balancing under acidic conditions and basic conditions. Now, from a classroom point of view, an exam point of view, I will just tell you that the acidic conditions are much more uh, prevalent. You'll see those much more often than we than you, you will see basic. So really focus on getting the acidic condition uh, approach down using the echo. Again, try to use that echo method. It's really helpful. Again, remember, it's balance the electrons, balance the charge, balance the hydrogens, and then use oxygen as a check. I hope this helps. Um, we'll talk to you in class, and have a good one.